Welcome back to the Visser Podcast. I'm Dr. Richard Visser, and I've been getting a lot of comments from my last video, and that's why I had to interject this one, okay? If I'm running CJC, DAC, Ipamorelin, Tessamorelin, or even direct HGH injections, isn't that basically the same as NA931? Today, we're breaking it down, and I'm gonna show you why these are not interchangeable. In fact, they work through completely different biological pathways. This is why this new development is so exciting because it's a different pathway. It's given us different results. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with a classic approach, GH segregogs and HGH injections. CJC1295, no DAC. Mimics growth hormone releasing hormone, GHRH, to get the pituitary to pulse GH. Ipamorelin mimics ghrelin to add another GH releasing signal. These are all available, right? These are all things that your TRT clinic or your bioidentical hormone replacement therapy clinic for women um, is, is working with are working with okay so nothing strange yet okay so tessamorelin clinically approved ghrh analog especially good for visceral fat reduction awesome okay direct hgh injections expensive skip the pituitary and inject recombinant human growth hormone straight into the circulation now all four approaches lead to the same intermediate step more GH in the bloodstream. Okay, with me still here, right? GH then signals the liver and some peripheral tissues to produce IGF-1. IGF-1 is the real worker bee. Muscle repair, tissue growth, collagen turnover, but remember, this route is indirect. Even direct HGH injections still rely on the liver's response. This is where the difference lies. So NA931 doesn't even get in line at the GH counter. It walks straight past the pituitary and the liver and directly flips the switch on G IGF-1, the receptor itself. That means it can deliver anabolic signaling without ever raising GH levels. Plus, NA931 isn't a one-trick pony. It's a quadruple receptor agonist. So let's say the smarty pants in the group who says, okay, you know what? I'm going to get a GLP-1, GIP agonist, and I'm going to add, you know, these to it to get the same effect as NA931. No, doesn't work that way. Okay? So here we go. IGF-1 receptor activation, direct anabolic signaling, muscle retention. One, two, GLP-1 receptor, appetite suppression, better blood sugar control. GIP receptor, nutrient partitioning, insulin sensitivity boost. Glucagon receptor, fat mobilization, high energy expenditure. So instead of just telling your liver to make more IGF-1, NA931 is flipping four switches at once. Two for building protecting muscle, two for burning fat and stabilizing metabolism. So why does this matter? If your pituitary or liver response is sluggish from age, stress, metabolic dysfunction, GH secrogogs, secretagogues, and even direct HGH might not give you the anabolic defect you're looking for. NA931 bypasses that upstream dependency and goes right to the receptor while stacking fat loss and metabolic benefits in one shot or better yet, it's actually one pill. So, GH secretagogues and HGH injections are great for supporting recovery, tissue repair, keeping GH pulsatile, but they're upstream tools. 
NA931 is a downstream multi-pathway activator. They can complement each other, but they're not the same. And using them as if they are will give you very different results. I'll show you a slide, side-by-side -side diagram of these two approaches. So you can literally see the fork in the road. So you can visualize it. One direct and one indirect. And why that matters for your results. If you like the deep dive like this, subscribe, share it with your training partner who still thinks GH and NA931 are twins. Until next time, we got more coming. So thank you very much. And a note, if this is a little overwhelming because we went a little deep on this, go back to my previous episode and two before that when we start talking about the different activations and the different kind of side-by-side -side comparisons that we have between Ozempic, which everyone knows, uh, Munjaro, um, Retitrutide, and now NA931. And why NA931 just blows the doors on everything we have so far. So, like I said before, it's entering its third phase of human trials. In my previous video, I actually have a link where you can go to it and try to apply. Um, but if they go as I suspect, this will be a game changer. Thank you very much. See you next time. Take care. Stay strong. Bye.